Hi, welcome to Watchmen of the King channel. My name is Dan, and this channel is designed to bring you news and events from around the globe from a biblical lens during these end times. First and foremost, I want to thank my brother Tom from Watchmen River. He went above and beyond as far as a shout out towards my channel. And I only want to serve God. I don't want to bring you me. That's not what this channel, that, that, that's not how this is designed. I want feedback. Um, I don't want to do this in a vacuum. And I want this to be a family. Now, there's been an outpouring of support already from you folks and the family, my brothers and sisters who have come across from Tom's channel. And I thank you. I, you guys touched me greatly in the past 20 hours. Um, and I can only attribute it to the work of the Holy Spirit. If I'm ever going astray, my fervent prayer is that God shuts me down. I don't want to lead anybody astray. My only hope is to help wake up the bride of Christ prior to the rapture. Many are awake, but many are asleep. And if we can get folks ready, then I think that that's what my calling is. Again, yesterday in my video, I discussed how we're different. Multiple, you know, everybody, everybody is different. You have your own calling and it may be, it may be simple and one person. So you may not be called to open up a YouTube channel um, or reach out to multiple people. I didn't know I was. I just, my background, I'm a, I'm a geek. So I technically work with computers a lot. And, you know, if, you'll, if you see from my first videos, there was a very quick transition into the setup I have now today. Okay. <clears throat> and... I went from my phone thinking that was good enough and then a microphone attached to my phone pointed at me and then and then I continued on to what I thought was a little bit more pleasing a little less harsh regarding sound and lighting and that kind of stuff okay again though I don't want it to be about me. I want it to be pleasant enough that somebody can listen because as you all may have seen, I find myself pausing and I find myself thinking through what I'm about to say. Now, there were times that in the beginning of the channel that I put together notes, copious notes, and brought in news sources and spliced in videos and that kind of stuff. And that I, I may get back to that again. But for the last couple of videos, that's not where I've been. That's not where I've been led. Okay. <clears throat> that's not how I've feel that God needs. Put it this way. I'm only doing what God puts on my heart for the day. Okay. With that said, I do want to welcome everybody who has recently subscribed. 
Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for taking a look at what I have to say. And again, I hope I only glorify God and the soon return of Jesus Christ. So, here's something. And this is the earliest I've ever got up to do a video. Now, I know that based on my studio, that nobody can tell what time it is. But it's 7 a.m. I was up at 4 thinking I would do a video to thank you all for joining. But I was going to do it later today. God doesn't want that from me. He kept putting on me as I was in prayer and as I was reading scripture this morning and as I was reading through comments. He put on me to discuss what I'm about to discuss with you. So that's why I'm here early. So I'm going to read some scripture with y'all today. And then we're going to discuss a few things because I've seen some comments. I've actually had to remove um, a couple of things because I don't want this to be a channel where we fight about stuff. I, I really don't. Um, I want us to be a family of believers that lift each other up consistently. Now, does that mean that I don't want you to rebuke me if I go off in my own flesh on something that's not of God? No, I want the feedback. I want to understand. Okay. Now, some folks brought up things about the queen. Now, I never met her. Okay. I, I, I know that probably is an obvious statement. I'm from the United States. Uh, I'm in Florida. And I've never been to the UK. So not only have I never met her, I've never seen her. I've only read what others have put. My, the point of my video was not whether or not she's a believer. She multiple times throughout her life proclaimed Christ. But do I know her heart? Did I spend any time with her? Do I see the fruit? No. I, I don't know that. What I do know is that an estimated 4.1 billion people joined and watched live. Now let's not even take into consideration rooms full of people. And this being streaming across various taverns and bars and tea rooms and, and all over the globe. Where it is suggested that every single nation was live streaming this. Now, one, that's already an indicator of what we know will happen. And if you don't, there's study to be done in Revelation. That the two witnesses that show up in um, in the tribulation... The Antichrist is going to be given power to finally kill them at about midpoint. That's probably right around the time that he stands up and declares himself to be God. Because he's going to be all puffed up about being able to kill these witnesses that were invincible. Here I go, pausing, looking up. You'll see me look up, okay? Because I'm searching my thoughts. <laughs> All right. The whole world sees and rejoices 
and gives gifts to one another. And then some kind of morbid death cam is probably placed round the clock on these two as they let them lay in the streets. And the whole world also watches them rise and ascend. So it's going to be mind blowing, but let's, let's back up a couple steps. We saw the whole world watch the funeral of the only monarch most of this generation has paid attention to. I'm not going to say known because there are other monarchs in other countries. Okay. But the queen was the one that was paid attention to. Okay. Again, this has nothing to do with her faith. I don't want to. I'm not judge. Uh, only God knows her heart. Only God knows your heart. Okay. There's going to be another time. I'm going to have to address the fact that there's a difference between belief in your head and belief from your heart. I'm going to touch on that today in what God put on my heart to talk to you about. But I can't judge that. So I'm going to answer the question about me judging other believers. I'm not doing that. I do not judge the condemnation. I cannot say that you are either going to heaven or going to hell. Okay? That's not for me. But we are, you and I, brother, sister, you and I are to call out other believers if they are not walking the walk. Save them from the fire, folks. Now, doesn't mean that they're not going to get saved in truth. Um, okay, let me back this up. Does it mean that they're not saved? No. But I also don't believe that the rapture is for every, quote, proclaiming Christian. All right, this is going to be a firestorm. You guys are going to, I mean, there. this is going to rub people wrong. And I said that yesterday, okay? So I'm not an evangelist. I'm here to talk to the church. I'm here to talk to sleepers. I'm here to talk to self-deceived. The people who aren't walking with Christ. Okay, you got to remember, it's a relationship. It's not a religion. Okay, the claim to be a Christian is, is, is getting so watered down now. It's almost not worth stating that you're a Christian. You're better off to say that you are a follower of Jesus Christ than to say, I'm a Christian because of all the flavors that are out there. Okay. Um, okay. So what do, what did God put on my heart today? Let's, let's get to the meat of this. Right. And I want to read a couple scriptures first so that you know where I'm headed. All right. First, I'm going to, first, I'm going to start in Ephesians, All right? In Ephesians 2, 8, Paul says, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Okay. Understand that I absolutely believe there is nothing you or I or anybody could do in our own strength to save us. There is no work that we could do that saves us. 
It was all done at the cross. But Paul doesn't let us off the hook. He says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Okay. Let's go over to James 2. James 2. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Other transla uh, translations have tremble. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person? that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see, that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. All right, I'm going to pause the scripture reading. And let's talk about this because this has been pointed out to me. Again, I don't want to come along saying that works saves you. I'm completely against that because the Bible is against that. You first have to, one, understand that grace, that, that Jesus was given to us sacrificially through God's grace as a gift. Okay, so the very first thing you need to do is accept that. Right? The second thing you need to do is repent. What does repent mean? It means to change your mind. Metanoia. It means to turn from what you were doing and agree with God. Okay? That you are a sinner that you are blind, poor, wretched, naked. Now, <clears throat> again, I'm just covering this in a way to make sure that you understand, family, that I am not pushing works as salvation. I am pushing works as proof of your faith. Because the Bible does that. Paul talks about, you know, everybody wants to throw that. It's not by works, lest any man should boast. But then what do they, they, they leave out to 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Again, I've always been talking about your walk. What is your walk like? Okay. <clears throat> so now I want to I want to cover one more verse. And it's going to be Matthew 25. And most of most watchers will know this. Okay? Well, let's let's go ahead and start at the beginning. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. This is why you hear me say, wake up church, wake up the sleepers. Okay, 
But at midnight there was a cry. Here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourself. And while they were gone, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. That's got to be one of the scariest phrases in the Bible. Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Again, it is a relationship. It's not a religion. You need to have a relationship with Jesus. You need to be walking with him. All right. Now, what's scary about this parable? Five of them were foolish and five were wise. Yet they all believed. Think about that for a second. All of them had lamps. All of them believed initially. At least claimed to. All right. So <clears throat> I'm going through all of this just leading up to what really hit me. I mentioned before that I'm in Florida. Okay. And we see a storm coming, right? It's a few days out, right? And if, you, if you've if you never been in the path of a hurricane, never lived through a hurricane, um, they're pretty big deals. Um, I've never lived through a major one, personally. Uh, this may be the year. But I'm going to use the storm as an analogy, okay? <clears throat> but I'm going to use the storm as an analogy, right? We've been warned. We've been told that a storm is coming, okay? Okay? Now, there are going to be people out there that, one, don't even listen to the news or turn on the weather. So they're not going to hear about the storm. Okay? There's going to be others out there that have said, they're going to say, yeah, well, we've lived here. I've, I've lived in this location for 20 years. And we've never been hit by a storm. Okay, then we're going to have those that believe that there's a storm and they're going to say, oh yeah, I see the storm, but they're not going to do anything at all about it. Okay, they're going to leave their home just the way it is and they're going to say, well, well, we'll see. We'll see if this really happens. And then you're going to have some folks that are going to outwardly prepare. And what that's, what, what things that you'll see people do around here in preparation for a hurricane is put up storm shutters, cover windows. Businesses and homes will do this. You will see people take in things from the yard. Things that can blow around. I mean, sustained winds of 70 plus miles an hour. 
and Gus, you know, it, it, this, this thing is looking to be a major hurricane. All right. Ian is the one that's coming up and, you know, I sure hope and I do pray that it either calms or doesn't hit this current path that it's on. All right. But let's get back to the preparations. If I believe that the storm is coming, I see it. And it's been told, not only has it been told to me, now I'm even watching for it. But I do nothing about it. I don't put my lawnmower away. I don't put away the potted plants. I don't clean up things outside and and put away the lawn furniture, and the cushions and the, you know, put the grill in the garage. And I don't do that stuff. Am I, am I really believing? Am I really doing what I need to do to prepare for that storm? Because if you don't and you leave all that stuff outside, okay, you, you leave the grill, you leave your plants, you leave all this kind of stuff out there. People have no idea until it hits how destructive even the little things are going to be on your house. Okay. Now that's the external. All right. You know, your neighbors, they hear you say you believe the storm is coming. But they, as they are preparing their homes, they see that you're not. So, are you walking like the storm is coming? Are you preparing outwardly, right? So, let's go a step further, all right? Let's say you've prepared outwardly. And everything is battened down. You've got storm shutters on. You look like a house that's ready. But inside, your cupboards are bare. You have no reserve water. You have no batteries for your flashlights. You have no... You have nothing inside preparing for this storm to land, okay? So now you look like you're ready, but you're actually not because you don't realize the storm could knock out power for three to four days. In Katrina, we saw it knocked out power for an extended period of time. When that happens, folks, it's not like you can run down to the local grocery store. Those shelves are empty too. So if your house isn't prepared inside even though it may look like it on the outside, there's still going to be problems when that storm comes. So I'm trying to give you an analogy using a storm only because one, it's, it's nearly here. Um, 
And this is what God said, hey, I've got something for you to use here. And, <clears throat> and so let's take a look at this for a second, just, just for giggles. This is, this is the storm I'm looking at, okay? All right, Ian is planning on coming and hitting Florida, all right? And this is the cone that they have. So as you can see right here, it's Saturday, all right? Here, here is Wednesday as a major hurricane. And then up here is landfall as a hurricane, right? This, this is the area in which I live. So I'm going to be watching people prepare. All right. I wanted to give you this visual. I wanted to give you this analogy for the storm. Because we see Jesus is approaching. Okay, now I'm not going to call him a storm. Yes, he will be for the tribulation. There's a storm coming and it's the tribulation. Okay, so there's that. But for the believer, okay, for you and I, we believe the storm's coming. In fact, we may be even out there warning others that the storm is coming. But if our house, our own homes are not ready, if outside we've gotten everything ready, well, worse, what happens if you're saying you're a Christian and you watch the Weather Channel, right? Like you say the storm's coming. You watch the Weather Channel once a week. Um, but you do nothing to clean up the things outside. Now, some folks are going to say, well, the Holy Spirit has to do that. Well, there's going to be some things out there that you're going to need help cleaning up. Okay. Maybe you have a really large grill in the middle of your porch that is not movable by yourself. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes in and says, okay, I'm going to help you with this. I'm going to help you move this so that you're ready. All right? So there are things in our lives where we can't do them on our own. But there are things that we do need to do Showing that we changed. Because you are a new creature. When you've been saved, you are a new creation. So, you clean up outside. That's where the parable of the virgins comes in. All the virgins believed the bridegroom was coming. But five were foolish and had no oil to trim their lamps. That is your empty pantry, empty refrigerator, no water. That is the no batteries. That is inside the home. It means you're not ready for the storm. Make sure you're ready. Make sure that you're walking with Christ. Ask the Holy Spirit. God will give you the Spirit in abundance. If you repent, you, you say, I am a sinner. There is, 
do you realize there's there's a difference between sin and transgression? Oh, I'm going all over the place. This is a longer video than I anticipated. Okay, there's a difference between sin and transgression. All right? Sin is missing the mark. You have, it's, it's, it's an archery term, okay? So let's say I'm trying to hit this light bulb, okay? I'm trying to hit this light bulb. And so I shoot at this light bulb. And I hit this instead. So I've missed the mark. I've missed it. All right. That is, if God calls you, for example, you can, you can be the best person in the world. But if God calls you to do something and you don't, you've sinned. You've missed the mark. You've missed what he intended for you to do. And you, and you want to think about the, the rich young ruler that wanted, that asked Christ, what, what do I do to be saved? And Christ goes over, you know, do this and that and the other thing. It's basically say, follow the rules. Okay. I'm paraphrasing here, guys. Um, he says, follow the rules, follow my, follow my commandments. And he goes, oh, I've done all that. I've done that. I'm, hey, I'm good to go. Yeah, I've done everything you said. And then God calls him. Jesus calls him. And he said, sell all you have and follow me. And the guy says, I can't do that. Now, here you've got a guy that has done everything to follow the law. So he has not transgressed. He has not trespassed. Right? He has only sinned. Do you see? You can... Be as good as I, you know what? There's nobody good. So I don't even want to go there. But you can think you're as good as whatever. And you can do whatever works. You think for, for God's kingdom. But you can still sin. That's why all have sinned. All have sinned. It doesn't mean all have transgressed. Okay, transgression is something different. Transgression, trespassing. It is when you know where the line is drawn. You know what the law is. And you willfully, in your own decision making, you know it's bad. And you choose to cross that line. You choose now to go and do the thing which God has said, do not. Okay. So transgressing, going and doing the things that God says, do not. Sinning. It can be sometimes that. It can be sometimes stumbling, right? And we call it sin. But sometimes sin is not doing what God tells you to do. So, yes, this has gone long. And I hope somebody out there is getting something from this. I want, family, I want you to understand I am not about works. I'm not about judging other people at all. We are called, we do need to be fruit inspectors. But, I'm not here to condemn anybody. I'm here to lift you up. And again, like I said in yesterday's video, if anything I'm saying is convicting you, instead of coming at me or any brothers and sisters about it, why don't you go to God first and say, you know, God, 
what is it you want me to see here? Because maybe, yeah, I mean, I felt really convicted about what was said. <clears throat> Again, hey, Tom, I can't wait to meet you, man. Um, as I said before, you know, it feels like I'm sitting there with a friend. And I was, you know, I almost went and grabbed me a big glass of milk yesterday. <laughs> so, um, anyway, and family, brothers and sisters, lift each other up. Don't bash each other over translations. I mean, you see, I use the ESV because it's, it's easy to, I don't, it's easy to use. I, I've known on fire people for God that have used the NIV. I don't even want to get into any of that. But then I've watched folks that bash people over the head if they're not using the King James. Why are we fighting? Don't fight amongst each other. There's a world out there that's lost. There are people in the church that are asleep. We want to be ready. We want to be walking with him because the last thing you want to hear is depart from me. I never knew you. Get to know Christ. Walk with him. Prepare your house. Get it ready. We see what's coming. And don't just do it on the outside. Don't, di don't do it just for show. Do it on the inside as well. He said the foolish version, the foolish, the five foolish, they didn't have enough oil. That's inside. So, hey, I love you guys. Sorry about that. I do. I love you guys. I wouldn't be doing this channel. I wouldn't be putting myself out there. And the enemy is going to paint bullseyes on our backs. If we're out here preaching God's word. And, and I absolutely love what Tom says. Because I'm the same. I'm the same. I am not a preacher. I have no formal training in theology. I, I, I didn't go to seminary. I'm not pro a prophet. I'm just a, I'm just me. I'm a long haired, bearded, hippie looking biker dude that loves Jesus. And I want you to know this same Jesus, the one who bled, the one who sacrificed and died willingly for you and me. As we are all sinners, we all need him. There are, there'll be other things that I get into in other videos that he put on my heart, <clears throat> but this one, I want to leave you with, I, I really felt led to lead, leave you with that storm analogy that we still have things to do. We still have work to do in our own lives to clean up our lives, to walk with him in and outside our house. So be ready, be watching. Be looking up. Be excited. Jesus is coming, guys. I hope to see you all in the air. I'm so excited to meet most of you. I'm excited to meet all of you. All of my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm excited. That's why it feels like such a family. Everybody have a great day.
I've got a storm to prepare for. Take care.